test. My Vietnamese heritage is tested. We're making pho, or at least I'm gonna try to. But as some of you guys may know, I went to Vietnam just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, no, no, keep going. Yeah, because remember we passed by, we we're about to turn and follow you guys, but she's like, no, keep going. We go straight. Yeah, my bangs. First, first full day in Vietnam. Walking to our grandma's house right now, and then we're gonna go to our uncle's shop to eat. What is it? Mei. Noodles. I got to try the best pho I've ever had in my life and I'm not just saying this because it's my uncle's pho shop Always test the pho broth before adding in any poison sauce, sriracha. Whoa, it's really like that. Yeah, yeah. How do you say that? Like rich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, TLC in there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's fun I've ever had. I'm not saying that just because he's my uncle. That's it. I'm a banana. I'm like, so comforting. Uh, two of my uncles actually opened a restaurant. What's so freaking incredible to me is that they created restaurants out of their homes. This is where they raise their kids. This is where they wake up and go to sleep. Basically every day, my uncles and their wives respectively clean up the whole house, cook everything, sell until they sell out, and then take everything down. But oh my god, my uncle's noodle shop, which he makes ho tiu, was so freaking good too. It was... One of the things about Vietnamese cuisines that hit this like core warmth and coziness feeling inside of me is because of how much umami is developed into a lot of recipes. It's very rarely perfectly measured out by like the teaspoon and one and a quarter cups type of situation. My uncles and aunts just kind of know how much to put in every day to have this consistent recipe carry their business. I think every time I think of cooking pho, something that carries a lot of weight in a culture, bum bao wei and like, I don't know, these things that just seem like, oh, only my mom can cook it or someone who really knows what they're doing can cook it. It's just always intimidated me a little, but today I'm just gonna try. So if I fuck up, then poison sauce and sriracha is always there to save me. I'm staring at these frozen beef 
ox feet right now that I picked up from H Mart. One of the first steps is to clean the shit out of these bones, boiling them in water and then rinsing it out. And then we get to start with the broth. So as you can see, we're cooking dinner today when the sunlight is still out. This is gonna take about like four to five hours. And that's kind of like the shortened version too. I feel like this will taste better tomorrow once everything's soaking. <laughs> that I haven't drank any water for like a couple hours now, which is so bad, I know, but I've just been so focused on making this pho. My basic needs like water just kind of escaped me. I thought it's a good time for me to introduce the sponsor of today's video, which is Water Drop. Now I've been trying my best to incorporate water in more fun and interesting ways. I know it sounds crazy, but you just got to in order to like meet the criteria of hydration that we need in a day. If you're like me, I just, I can't, do the whole gallon of straight water per day. But Water Drop has formulated these really incredible tiny cubes. They're called micro drinks. But one of the exciting things that at least I get excited about when I'm about to make my Water Drop drink is choosing the flavors because look, here, I'll show you. This is my little Water Drop section. We have things like watermelon cucumber, star fruit, elderberry. All their flavors have a theme going on that really boosts up our water intake. I really love their boxes too because look, and all you gotta do is push it. The flavor I chose today is called Youth, but it's peach, ginger, ginseng, aloe vera. There's vitamin C, riboflavin, and niacin in here. And I believe they're sugar-free, vegan, and gluten-free as well, if that applies to you. But really, I think one of the main things that I've been loving is because of how subtle the taste is. So it still tastes true to that refreshing element that water has, and it's not crazy overwhelming, you know what I mean? The amount of plastic that's in one plastic water bottle cap is equivalent to 10 of these little guys right here. 10 of these. You can check out the link in my description and use the code TAMMAI for a special discount. Time to do some work while my pho is simmering. Two hours, baby. My mom did tell me to keep a little bowl and a ladle nearby and check on the pot like every 20 minutes or so and skim off any gross gray stuff that you see float up because it's like the nasty parts of the bones that we don't want. Today I'm this emoji. You know what I mean? I freaking love using emojis that kind of makes sense and don't make sense while I'm texting my friends. We'll randomly text each other and I'll be like, drinking my water for today. You could also go for some dirty jokes as well. Insert dirty joke. on over to my new couch. What do you guys think? It's a design within reach. Nicoletti sectional, black leather sectional. But I'll talk more about it in my next like loft tour because I've moved stuff around. Ta-da! But I'm currently doing some work on this table that I bought from Amazon and it's so convenient. I originally bought this to have like picnics and stuff when I went to Korea. I saw a bunch of people put their picnic spreads on these little foldable tables and I thought that's so smart. Bugs and ants don't get to your food and you don't have to like crouch all the way down to enjoy your food. But anyway, I'm also using it as a work from home companion. I've been experimenting with working around the house. Honestly, there's way too much sunlight coming through that window. So I'm still figuring it out. The feelings of each area in my home aren't getting totally mushy. So I hope it stays that way. It feels really good to spread out sometimes, you know? It's tricky. I don't know. I'm figuring it out. Still have a dull ass knife. Baby's 
very spa. <laughs> I received confirmation from my mom. We do not need to put on the lid. What I'm really excited about is storing this broth in the freezer and then taking it out when I need a good, hearty something to sip on. Natural bone broth is just so healthy for you, especially if it's infused with ginger and onions, you know? That's probably why it's like the number one hangover cure. I need to keep skimming off the scum though. I think I still have an hour to go and then we can put in our pho seasoning, let it simmer some more, and then start preparing ingredients for our pho, pho show. I'm fucking excited. Okay, we are now down to the final hour of the broth simmering and I'm about to do something that's very controversial. Very controversial. And it might make or break my pho, I feel. I don't know, it feels really wrong. I'm just listening to what my mom told me. Basically, I'm using this. To be honest, it kind of confused me hella when my mom told me to get the Yavi, which is seasoning powder. But she said to just do it or else it would take me two full days to make a traditional pho broth. I am happy that my foundation of this broth is fully from beef bones. And that's really where the depth is coming from. I guess this is just going to be the thing that brings us home. I know this is not how my uncle makes it. Oh, There's a spoon in here. Mm, I think this is where the cinnamon and the cloves and the star anise are. I guess it's like mashed up. I have an urge to stick my tongue in all the seasoning. I think it's because it looks like tahini. Okay, it's smelling pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. And I think the seasoning also added this deep, rich color to my broth too. So, I'm not too mad at it. Hopefully it tastes okay. I look like a witch brewing up a magical potion or something. Magical potion for badass. I just got a text from my mom that I was supposed to take out the onions and the ginger because they're kind of breaking up inside of the broth. I was like, something's not right. But now I don't know how to take it out because it's all intermingled with the broth. I think I'm gonna take a strainer and then just pour into a big bowl. I don't think this is how they do it. Unless I get like my big strainer. Actually, this looks like it'll do it. I can just like fish things out. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, I put the bones back in and it's looking more like pho broth. It's a lot clearer. Good soup. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you, mom. You're welcome. Okay, bye. 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 We're getting somewhere. I don't know what it is, but something inside of my little Vietnamese heart is telling me to put in some fish sauce. Why not? There she is. Fish sauce. Ooh, ooh. It's like popping champagne. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that I drink. <laughs> Woo, that shit dick. Here I go eyeballing things again. Definitely needs fish sauce. Hopefully that did the trick. Mmm, a lot better. Still missing something though. I don't know what it is. What is it missing? Maybe just a little bit more. So how many spoons have I done? This is my third spoon. Which is a lot, by the way. But I'm cooking a whole cauldron of pho to feed myself for the next week. So this could last me a really long time once I freeze the broth. Got this ice box where my heart used to be. And uh, I'm so cold, I'm so cold, I'm so cold. What happened to Omarion? Is he still making music? Song used to be my shit.
Hiya, baby. Woo. Can't believe I made pho. What the pho? Okay, I'll stop, sorry. But I also made an additional little bowl. It's basically a raw egg bathing in the pho broth. And I got this idea from my uncle's shop. And the only other time I ever had a raw egg in my pho, it was when I ate at the MD in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And that shit blew my mind. So now I have to have a raw egg every time I have pho broth. It's just a thing. Also, I have my hoisin sauce and sriracha here for dipping because I have some beautiful slices of wagyu that are cooking in the broth right now. I put them in raw and then as I poured over the hot broth, it cooked it to this perfect medium rare texture that I really enjoy. But if you're like me and you like a little tang, I do really like to squeeze extra lime into my sauces. That's a, pr That's a pretty good broth. I'm like legitimately surprised. I'm so glad that I added in the fish sauce to really add in the richness that I was looking for. It's in my, my bag. Sounds so formal. My, okay? Welcome. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. All right, I'm gonna try this broth. Oh my gosh, something about the raw egg yolk mixed in with this kind of broth, it literally feels like the biggest hug. No matter how full I am, I always have room for something sweet. That's gonna be a lifelong curse that I'm gonna have to live with. But that's okay. I'm gonna have these Alden's Organic Sea Salt Caramel Ice Cream Sandwiches. They're so cute. They're these tiny squares. wash up, get ready for bed, think about how I can improve this pho recipe next time I try to make it. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me the whole day today. And hopefully this inspires you maybe to try and cook a meal that is representative of your culture that you've been a little bit intimidated to try. All in all, I would say pho is more of a labor of love and a testament to patience for good food. But the process itself was very easy. There weren't that many dishes to clean, which is great. I love that. To be honest, most of you guys are probably way better cooks than I am, but we all start somewhere, right? So yeah, today was fun. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.